Hey guys, it's Andrew. I've recently spent some time working with Angular 2, and if you've done the same, you probably noticed that Angular 2 makes a lot of use of decorators. Decorators are probably going to be a feature of ECMAScript 7. If you're not familiar with a decorator, I'm going to recommend you read this article by Adios Manny. I'll have a link to this underneath this video. It's called Exploring ECMAScript Decorators, and it gives you a great introduction. Basically, a decorator is a function that we can call on another function to somehow change the functionality of that other function. Decorators don't really introduce any new capabilities into JavaScript. Really, it's just some simpler syntax for doing the same thing. So I'm going to assume you've read this article, or at least know what decorators are, and let's go ahead and have some fun with decorators. In this video and the next couple of videos, we're going to build a few different decorators to give you an idea for not only how to build one, but also what types of things a decorator might be used for. In this video, we're going to build a decorator that will time a function and print the length of time it takes out to the console. So of course, first we'll need a function to time. Let's create an object here which has a function in it. And the reason I'm doing it this way is because right now, to the best of my knowledge, you can't apply a decorator to a top level function, if you will. It has to be a property on an object. So in our functions object here, let's create a function called square all, and it will take an array. And predictably, this will just map over the array, and it will just square every number in the array. Obviously, this doesn't do very much, but I want something that we can easily make long running if we pass a larger array to. Of course, we can run this, and if we pass it an array, let's just pass it an array with one item in it, and if I go ahead and run this, you can see we have an array with just four printed out to the console. Now we can get a longer running function if we create an array with 100 items and we fill it up all with the number four, for example. Now, if we run this, it takes a little bit longer, but now you can see, of course, we get 16 back. So how do we figure out how long it takes our function to run? Well, let's create a decorator here called time. And a decorator is really just a regular function. It's all about how we apply it that makes it a decorator. If we're applying a decorator to a method or to a function on an object, then we get three parameters passed to our decorator. The first one is the target, which is the object itself. In our case, this would be the object we're calling functions. Second is the key, which is the name of the method. In our case, this is square all. And third, we have a descriptor. Now, a descriptor for a method or for a property on an object is an object that defines basically how that property or function should work. If you've ever used object.define, you may recognize this descriptor. In fact, this whole function signature, target, key, and descriptor, is really the exact same function signature as object.define property. As you can see, this gets object, the property name to be defined on the object, and the descriptor, which is the definition of that property. Now, the descriptor has a bunch of values on it. As you can see, it has configurable, which is a Boolean, enumerable, and writable. Those are all Booleans. And then there's also value, which is the actual value of the property. And so what we can do with this decorator function is adjust this descriptor in some way and then return the adjusted descriptor. And that new descriptor that we return becomes the descriptor for this function. Now that may sound a little vague and it may sound like there's not a whole lot you can do with that, but it's actually really flexible because remember, one of the properties of the descriptor is descriptor.value, which is the actual function that we're trying to assign. And so we can overwrite that with a new function and we can basically do whatever we want then with this property. So for example, we can start in here by grabbing the original function that was going to be assigned to the target object. So we can say our ridge function here is going to be descriptor.value and let's also do dot bind to the target. That's important because if inside descriptor.value, which is the function, we use the keyword this referring to the target, we want to make sure we are bound to that context so the function will work as expected. Okay, so now that we have that, we can do descriptor.value and we can assign a new function here. Now we don't necessarily know anything about the function that we're working with here within of our decorator function. So we don't know what arguments to accept here to our new descriptor.value. So we can just use the rest operator to collect all those arguments up. Okay, so now what do we want to do inside of our new function here? Well, of course, one thing that we're going to want to do is call the original function, right? And we're going to use the spread operator to spread those arguments back out inside of the original function. And obviously there's going to be some value we return from that that we need to capture. And eventually we're gonna to need to return that value. But the whole point of doing this is to time how long it takes to run 
this original function, right? So above this, let's do console.time. And underneath this, we can do console.time end. And these two functions, console time and console time end, are part of most browsers, developer tools. And basically, when we call time end, it will print out how many milliseconds it's been since we called time. Now, both of these can take a label, and we should pass them a label so that we can match them up. So what we'll do is we can use the key, which is the name of our function, as the label. Now, this will work unless our descriptor.value function is a recursive function, in which case we'll be using the same key repeatedly, which could mess up our timing. So let's just create an index value here. And for each one of these, we'll just apply that index plus plus. And actually, we can't do that because we need it to be the same for both. So we'll just get an ID here, which will be I plus plus, and then we will just append the ID to both of our keys. Excellent. There you go. So this is our entire time decorator. Now to apply it to square all, all we have to do is say at time. And we call that right above the function that we want it to be applied to. And it's as simple as that. The only other thing we have to remember is we have to switch from JavaScript to Babel here for the language. So now we can use decorators. And let's see this in action. If I go ahead and run this, we can ignore the array. But look right here, square all zero took 0.142 milliseconds. Excellent. Let's bump this array up so that it has 100,000 items. And let's run this again. And this time, you can see that it took 16.4 milliseconds. So that makes perfect sense. A larger array, let's add a few more zeros here and see what we get. The larger the array is, the longer it will take to run the function. And I guess I added too many zeros. All right, so that is our time decorator. And I hope as a starting point, this gives you a lot of ideas for where decorators might be useful. All we have to do is add this one little statement above a function, and suddenly we can control the way it works. And this could be really handy for development, as you might imagine. You might have a whole arsenal of development decorators that allow you to easily inspect parts of your application. Well, that's it for this video. Next time, we will build another decorator. I'll see you later.